There's so much more good than there is bad out of everything that's happening here. It just bad gets a lot of airplay. People think they're fooling me, but I see what's going on. I'm just making a list in my head. That's all. I think we're going to see a dip in the company's involvement, and we are going to have to survive that period with grace. What can a match director do that would give a better return on investment for that uh, that sponsor? <coughs> all right, <coughs> that wasn't the that wasn't the segue I was expecting. Okay, I, I I just have trouble wrapping my head around the fact that someone is literally looking at you know what amounts to softcore porn on Instagram yeah. and saying I'm gonna go buy that firearm. <laughs> Welcome to the Three Gun Show, brought to you by Armalite. This is episode 144, and I'm your host, Dave Hartman. My guest this week is the marketing guy behind many of the companies that you know and love through his company, Hawkeye Syndicate, Mark Stevens. Before we get into the interview, a couple things. You may not know this, but uh, this is my full-time gig. I'm a full-time podcaster. I do the Three Gun Show exclusively. To keep up on the quality of interviews and content that you have come to expect, I need your help. I have started a Patreon page for the show. What Patreon does is it allows you as an individual to support me as a creator directly without the need for an intermediary like a network or something like that. If you find the content here on the Three Gun Show valuable, there are various levels of contribution with different rewards and you can choose one that fits you. Match recons and bonus content will be available through Patreon exclusively for the first 90 days for supporters of the Three Gun Show. After that, they will come onto the main feed so if you can't support right now for whatever reason, don't worry. We'll still hear all the great content. It'll just come out three months later. If you do choose to support the show using Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash three gun show. And huge thanks to the folks that have already subscribed. That's totally cool. I really appreciate it. Now on to this week's show. Mark Stevens and I had a long talk about the shooter sponsor relationship, how we can provide more value to sponsors and uh, what we can do better on social media social media to better engage our audience. Then we dive into how a match director can better provide value to their sponsors, the changing landscape of the firearms industry after the election, and finally, we talk gun bunnies. Show notes can be found at 3gunshow.com slash episode 144. Now enjoy this one with Mark Stevens. Mark, welcome to the 3gun show. Oh man, thanks for having me, Dave. This is awesome. I'm pretty excited. Been listening to you for... Got a few months now, really hardcore since we met uh, down in Texas. Yeah, at and the then, uh, Vortex Shooter Source match. At the match. Vortex Shooter Source match. And then we had you up here at Forest Lake Sportsman's Club, which is kind of my home turf uh, for the Trigun. And uh, I've been trying to cram as much of that into my head as possible. But I'm, I'm uh, despite the conversations we're about to have, I'm pretty bad at consuming because um, <laughs> there's so much. It's hard for me. It's there's like a big like hose of stuff coming my right. direction. So, but uh, I, I can bookmark certain things, and so I've caught up on. I mean, the birdsaw ones are hilarious, and of course, <laughs> I listen to Adam, my partner here, uh, Adam Maxwell, um, and it's just I love what you guys are, what you're up to. I guess it's, it's you, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah, you're putting out an amazing amount of content. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I I always say we, but uh, I mean me and the dog, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not an uncommon statement in our in our world, right? Yeah, it's like uh, we're a small business. We got two people, me and the dog, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do. I'm very fortunate when uh, when I've been to Shot Show both yep. times that um, Shot Show is cool enough that I can get buddies to come with me to mm. schlep gear, wrangle guests, and uh, and like hold the camera and stuff. Yep. Uh, for like little to no compensation other than hugs yep. because Shot Show is so cool. And right? access. Yeah. 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 And access. Yep. Right. Absolutely. So we get to see all the cool stuff and and uh, you know one of my uh, buddies that went this year, guy. Uh, he's the sound guy, guy, mm-hmm. guy. All right, sound guy, guy, <laughs> sound guy, yep. guy. He uh, he just got into three gun, so he'd been shooting for, I think he shot one season, and then we went to shot show, and right. he, and he was just like in hog heaven, you know, because we're sitting here talking to like the best people in three gun, we're talking to all these manufacturers and stuff. So he, cool. was, he was really enjoying it. So has he got the sickness yet? I mean, is he's he all in? Got the sickness. Okay. He's yeah. so got the sickness. Yep. He um, he does. I think uh, two of the the local matches in Colorado. He's going to shoot his fa- first major match as an RO Sweet. at the uh, Colorado Three Gun Championship. And uh, very cool. Yeah, it's, it is really cool. So he yep. 
he moved back to Denver right after I started the show. Right. And um, we had the Noveski Multigun Championship. Yeah. By the way, this show's not about Guy. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell no, you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had the Colorado Noveski Multigun Championship, yep. and uh, Guy came out to, to check that out because, you know, I had told him about three gun, told him what I was doing stuff. And he's like, oh, that's interesting. Guy was a Marine, so he's, uh, you know, every Marine a rifleman, right? Right, right. So he came out, and I introduced him to um, Kevin Travis, who runs the match in Southern Colorado. Sure. Yep. Cool dude. And Kevin's a Marine. Yep. So they oh. immediately are, you know, best friends. And, uh, and you know, it sounds like worst enemies when they're when they're talking to each other because that's how they talk to each other. I don't know. But um, so, yeah, Ke- and since I left Colorado, Kevin, you know, is there. So guys started going to Kevin's matches and got some mentorship from uh, Kevin on a lot of things. Yep. And uh, other dudes that are around the area like Mike Griswold and various other people. So, yeah, he's he's full on into it now. That's so cool. I don't know very many people who are kind of into 3-Gun. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a couple, but most are either all in or they're like, no way. Yes, yeah. I, I see where this is going. <laughs> I like my wife too much. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> need something cheaper like a cocaine habit. Or yeah, something. if I could just get a good crack addiction, <laughs> yeah. everything would be fine. <laughs> Funny. Well, Mark, uh, glad to have you here, man. I'm I'm interested in uh, in getting to learn more about you, and then this uh, this great topic that we have for the audience here. I think a lot of people are going to benefit from. So let's uh, let's start with you. Yep. Um, give us an idea of your background sure who you are off the range okay uh, the the truth is is five years ago february i bought my first gun ever i'd never owned any firearms before and i bought it because i wanted to get to know my brother better and he's a cop and i thought if i buy a pistol we'll be like hanging out every weekend you know yeah. whatever right so i bought i went through this whole process and ended up buying like a sig 239 at gander mountain oh man oh yeah no i did everything <laughs> wrong i did everything wrong and uh and i went and i took the gander mountain um carry course here in Minnesota. And one of the things the guy said at the course was, if you're going to carry a gun, you should be proficient with it. That made sense to me. And one way to do that is either IDPA or USPSA. Mm -hmm. So I start doing all the research and I went, I got online and I filled out this whole order with this guy. Actually, uh, he's the manager of our club here at Forest Lake Sportsman's Club, Ron Westberg. He owned a company at the time called Unholstered. And I filled out this whole order and he calls me the next morning and he's like, yeah, Mark, this is Ron from Unholstered. Um, I don't think you want anything you ordered. <laughs> and he goes through this whole process of like why those were all just... Anyway, long story short, I still have every piece of gear he, he sent me. It's now my backup rig for Loner. Uh-huh. But um, that that was my first introduction to how cool people are. Like he saved me $25 and got me the right gear. Like, cool. You know, he could easily have taken my money and then called me. You know, I would have called him a month later and bought a whole other set because I had the wrong stuff. Right. So I, I went out and I shot a couple of very two-dimensional USPSA matches, um, and I overheard this thing about three-gun, and I'm like, that 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 sounds pretty cool. So I, I went out and I bought a pump shotgun and a SIG M400, and I went that July nice. to, uh, no, that June to a match out in Wisconsin here and met my, what's now one of my partners, Blair Stein there, and he was the guy that just said, um, or Blair Stein, excuse me, I do that all the time to him. <laughs> He's like, he's like, uh, he took me under his wing. And all of a sudden I met this whole group of people, which, and we all talk about this in three gun. The coolest thing about this game is the people, you Mm -hmm. know, it's that squad mentality. And he just said, okay, you know, follow me around. I'll show you what to do. I didn't hurt anybody. And by the end of that day, it was over. I mean, that was it, right? I just loved every bit of it. I was working in a very high end vacation real estate world. I owned a small uh, marketing and sales company. It was kind of a sycophant to a much larger company that was doing these, uh, uh, development deals around really wealthy families buying vacation homes around the world. And, and as the market was turning south, we were renting the unused weeks. This oh, okay. is kind of very early days of like VRBO, Airbnb yeah. and that stuff. So um, I got into it and I loved it. And that next year I got some better equipment from Blair. Um, in those days, ARs were way over, you know, we're at that real like peak mm-hmm. price. So building one made sense. So he built me an upper and some stuff. Yeah, you're looking at like, you know, for that Sig M400 itself, you're looking at like 1,600 bucks. It, it was at way, the time. yeah. So the 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 uh, crazy. the arbitrage on guns was definitely geared towards building at that time. So he helped me out, and I said, "Well, I looked around the space, and I'm like, man, the marketing looks like 1992. I mean, like pre Windows 95. Like, <laughs> and, I mean, it was bad. I mean, there were some companies that had like bear rugs with their 
product on it. And then the next picture was like on their linoleum table. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you know, this is terrible. I know so, what company you're talking about. Some people might. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try my best not to use names because I don't want to, I don't, this isn't about an individual. It's more, no, about, no, no. This is more about the collective, right? No, I totally understand. Yeah. So, I'm just teasing you. Yeah. So I, um, I'm like, Hey Blair, could I help pay you back for what all this help by, um, throwing a little marketing around Hawkeye ordinance because he was selling guns out of Iowa and doing some shotgun work for the local guys. And he said, yeah, of course. So we got into this thing and I, I bought a $150 camera from target video camera. And I filmed that video, which has now been seen like 300,000 times, which was getting started in three gun guns and gear. Mm -hmm. And that was the Hawkeye ordinance video channel, which is now like 10,000 subs. And I mean, it's a pretty, in our little world, it's, it's a big deal. It's kind of, you know, it's gotten, it's got legs, right? Yeah. So, um, once we saw that happening and his business started taking off, um, and you know, here we are five years later or four years later, um, he, uh, you know, we can't do, we can't satisfy the demand for his work. So it's super cool. Right. And we're it's a great problem to have. It is right. And high quality problem. And we always did it around like, I mean, we heat that shop with wood, right? So there is no overhead. So, um, we can keep the cost way down and really help people get it. You know, we're not nitriding bulk carriers or any of that stuff. We're just doing a good job of cutting guns so that they're easy to load fast triggers break nice and, uh, and people get a product they can afford. So, mm -hmm. I mean, all in like 1750 on an M2 completely race ready, you know? Oh, wow. And that's including all the parts and everything. So that was the goal. So kind of, we were very punk rock at the beginning, you know, just very dirty and it was great fun. And, uh, and we just started filming videos. People just started letting me just wander around places with a camera. And so we just kept doing that. It was super cool. Fast forward to three years ago, almost exactly to the day, uh, right around 4th of July weekend, um, I had an opportunity to sell that business back to the parent company. And um, okay. and I just said, I guess I'm going to do this. So I pulled the ripcord on that. And that gave me a year to figure out what I wanted to do. And I knew that we could, I knew that we had lightning. It was a matter of whether or not we could actually, you know, capture that and, and replicate it for other people where I wasn't so involved. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we started out with our first client that summer, which was TACOM. And Tim was very gracious to help bring us on. We kind of revamped his site and did a bunch of stuff for him. It was very early work. You know, we were learning at the same time, but it was still quantum leap from where he was. So it ended up being a good exchange of, of goods and services. We've gotten quite a bit better since then. And slowly but surely, here we are three years later, and we've got 16 full-blown clients. On a, we do this on a subscription basis so that it's easy for them cost-wise. We seek out companies that are, you know, we might even have to teach the lathe operator how to answer the phone. They're at that spot, you know, really early. Oh, I gotcha. They've got a widget or two that are really successful, and we're going to help them launch the third one. That's kind of like where right. we jump in. So you, you turned into away from uh, real estate marketing and selling blank space to now uh, being like a marketing contractor for multiple yep. companies. We, in many cases, most cases we have uh, migrated to either be their full blown, their CMO um, as the way we act. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in some cases now uh, actually developing their businesses from the inside out. All right. And that was all just super new, super cool stuff. Chief marketing officer, for those wondering. Yeah, sorry, chief marketing okay. officer. So, you know, and, and we act anywhere from, like, we just distribute content for you all the way up to we make all the decisions. You just, you know, tell us what, you know, give us the guardrails or let's sure. discuss those and then we'll live within that. And uh, it's super fun. I mean, it's super cool. Um, and then the Ignite series, so the third company, Hawkeye Ignite. So we have Hawkeye Ordnance, the guns, Hawkeye Syndicate, which is the marketing firm. Right. And then Hawkeye Ignite, which is a little over a year old now. There was an opportunity to take over a bunch of these Wednesday night matches. They were they were doing a Wednesday night three gun match kind of irregularly the year before last. Mm -hmm. And at Force Lake, at Force Lake, Club. excuse me, right here. So uh, the guy that was doing that is one of the giants in three gun, old school soldier of fortune, Brian Payne. You know, yeah. and, you know he's like, you know, we're really fortunate here in Minnesota because we have this lineage back to like Luth and Payne and Ubel and all these guys who are really early in the game. And then the MN three gun group comes in and they kind of build on that some more. And then we mm -hmm. come along as sort of the, the newcomer and we had this opportunity to do those Wednesday nights. So we picked them up and we decided to make it regular. So every Wednesday. And then in the process, we decided to do a three man three gun. And uh, we did this Trekker thing, which Adam's talked about. Yeah. And we did that video with you on. 
And so we started providing some of the other, the alternative three gun or the multi-gun. And um, gosh, that thing has grown now to, you know, we're doing 30s plus shooters every Wednesday night. And the coolest part is, is from my company standpoint is, is we roll tape. And we oh, have, I and so you. that is our content engine. So when there's nothing else going on every Wednesday night, I know I could take content. So I actually um, reg- don't really even squad for those so much anymore. I shoot through and then roll around with a camera because, like, our goal is is like scores and thirty high quality pictures are up before the last tailgate closes at the end of the match. Nice. So last season, it's unusual. I, yeah, it's that's the goal though. Is like we're trying to create a gold standard. We take credit cards, Apple Pay, Android, all that stuff at the on site. We, you know, we're just trying to like make it as as clean and easy as humanly possible, right? Do you guys take cash? We still take cash. Nice. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and if you don't have the money, I know a guy, we can help you out tonight. <laughs> the, um, no, but the, uh, you know, the concept is, is just to like test stuff out. You know, we're also affiliated with North Texas Multigun and Shooter Source. So mm-hmm. he comes up with a great idea. We try it up here and vice versa. So we're kind of bouncing ideas back and forth. Just like, what can we do to make it? Well, look, everybody's the only commodity that matters and this is the, the real conversation here because I'm not the guy to talk to about, you know, be the fastest shooter. You know, I'm a, I just tanked at the tri-gun, but generally speaking, I show up in the 30s or 40s at a major, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm good enough to like have an opinion, but, <laughs> but I'm just good enough to have an opinion. <laughs> and I'm 43. I'm not, I'm not making any, you know, I mean, the question is I could probably put the time in if I had it um, and maybe move into the high 30s, low 20s. Or I could just enjoy the fact that I, I crush it off, the, you know, off the, the course field as opposed to on it all the time. So mm-hmm. I squad through, and that's how I do it. So I shoot a lot, um, but it's somewhat unfocused. And uh, like the Trigun in North Texas is kind of my, my place to go when I want to mm-hmm. shoot without cameras and just go play. And that's really, really fun. So Yeah, that, you know, I like that idea. Um, I, I've mentioned multiple times, and it's something I've seen – all over the country that three gun is really regional. Like yeah. that you can, you know, blindfold me, drop me somewhere in a field and have me shoot a stage and I'll know where I'm at. Yep. Yep. Um, based on many, many different things, Absolutely. you know, um, obviously the, uh, the terrain, the, um, the presentation, uh, the fault lines, walls, our targets, even painted. gun selections, gun selections, gun selections, are huge. huge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're so, like, this is shotgun country. We yeah. don't, we don't have anything past, 400 and we can only get that on the weekends up here so yeah absolutely well Um, and um it's cool to see the uh god we got to come up with an uh, like a bootleg name for it you know like uh smoking the bandit style the this river of information running from minnesota to north texas multi-go and back yeah exactly because uh (laughs) it's cool to be able to try that out in different regions and see this plays here but will it play there it it, and it and it and our experience has been that half of it translates Mm -hmm. and half of it uh, it, you know, goes down like a lead balloon. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Like the, they do open squatting down there, yeah. which is super cool. They're far away. It's an hour and a half to get out to their range, and for Texas, that's like a, I guess that's a long way as far as like weekend entertainment goes, uh-huh. which is hard to believe how big they are. But so the guys that go out there, they don't want to be like waiting around all day, so they open squad. He, you know, Jeremy's got um, ROs at each stage mm-hmm. and easy to reset stages. Lots of resetting steel and stuff. And, um, and the guys go, you show up at, you know, you're not hung over, you get up early, you go at 10, <laughs> you knock out your five stages and you're done by the you know, early afternoon. If you don't make it out of bed till noon, you got time for pancakes and to shoot five stages. Right. So it works really cool. We could never do that with the constrictions we have here. No. Like this club is just really busy, you yeah. know? Well, and, and they're a unique proposition, right? Because there's not only is it, is it far away from most things, but there's not a lot going on there. Yep. They don't have a general membership. That's it's true. matches only. That's true. They're, they exist because of as, it, as it stands today, that's changing. But yes, that's, yeah, that's yeah, accurate. Yeah. Yep. But that, that, that range is big enough that you could easily do both. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Rock Castle, you could Several easily thousand do both. Acres. Uh, Lead Farm, easily do both. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there are some facilities yeah. that can handle it. And the cities here, our best ranges are, they're right, I mean, they're right on the edge of town, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems rural where we're at right now, but. You know, right over there is a little town that's got, you know, Starbucks and Chipotle and it's, you know, it's not even a mile, which is great when you're hosting a lot of folks, but it's not so good for, you know, um, straight or errant bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then it, uh, you know, makes you nervous about sprawl, right? So are we going to get surrounded and then pushed out? Yep. 
Yep. I mean, that's a legit concern and for ranges. There are clubs here in Minnesota that are, are constantly living that fear. Not so much here at Forest Lake, but um, there are a couple mm-hmm. that, like, they're one stray bullet away from losing their charter. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, you know, um, I always like to use the example of uh, Golden Gun Club in mm-hmm. uh, Colorado. Okay. Where do you think that's located? I have no idea. It's Aurora. It's not Golden. Oh. Yeah. They got pushed out of Golden into okay. Aurora. Interesting. <laughs> so it's still called Golden Gun yeah. Club, but it's not no longer in Golden. Yep. No, you just showed my naivete around uh, <laughs> geography in, in Colorado. So well, I figured I knew, Coors, I knew, Coors, come on. Yeah, Coors I, is I knew Golden. Aurora, actually, but, because ah. there's a, there used to be a venue out there. I, my, my first career, I was an arena rock concert engineer, right? So right. I traveled all over everywhere. So Aurora had a venue at one point, if I remember right. So I'm trying the theater. to theater. Think of which one it I was. I could be wrong. Aurora is so Th- huge. There's also some significant missing <laughs> spots in my memory from those years. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will tell you that my iPhone, um, you know, among other things, um, maintains my, like, ability to, like, process this much information because I, I yeah, my memory has, has failed me on more than one occasion over the years. But uh, it's coming back. And losing it all at the same time, so yeah, yeah. There's that whole thing of like uh, coming back, but now I'm also getting older, so I'm losing. It, yeah, it. I know, I know. I'm, I'm peeking out. Is probably what's happening. But <laughs> that's funny. Well, Mark, the uh, you know, topic we're here to uh, talk about today is is uh, it's pretty broad because we both have like um, um, expertise in, in a number of areas, and I, I feel like you and I've connected on that quite yeah, quite well for sure. And uh, you carry with it a unique perspective because you see it from both sides, maybe three sides of the, uh, of the coin. Yep. You know, you've got the, uh, um, the company side, the mm-hmm. companies that support three gun, you've got it from the shooter side and then you've got it from the match runner side. Yeah. Really. And that's pretty much like the, um, Hawkeye ordinance syndicate. And, uh, We're, we've got night f- that you're talking about. We've got our fingers in all those pots in some way or another. So I think we do have kind of a, uh, I'm sure it's not entirely unique, but we've got a, a, a rare, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm look at how the math actually works from everybody's yeah. perspective and um, and then what the expectations are, um, what the deliverables are from all three sides and um, frankly, to some extent, the poor condition of it all right now. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that to slag anybody. I don't, I don't think anyone's anyone's really stood up. You know, Ruben so far has probably done the best job of explaining and Sean. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. of, Sean of like, Yeah, I mean, if you want to know what to do as a sponsored shooter – you know, reference that podcast because that is, that's pure gold right there, you know? And there's a lot of reasons to, to be involved in sponsorship and stuff. We can go down that road now, or we can talk about the technical side or the the, the money side, but. Well, I have a question yeah, to start please. off with. Let's do it. I, I want to talk about all of those things. Yeah. And I, and, uh, I hope we don't forget them, but, um, we are in a interesting period right now. Uh-huh. We dodged a massive bullet with a very, very ungun friendly uh-huh. uh, candidate for president. Yep. We're in a perceived time of joy, uh-huh. right? Uh, other than, you know, just constantly, continually bombing the rest of the world. Yep. There's um, that. Yep. There's that. Uh, but our industry, we're, we're at like a weird part right now right. where at SHOT Show, you saw a lot of stunned faces. Because it was right after the – that was during the inauguration. Yeah, yep. You saw people, like, looking around like, uh, well, <laughs> I don't think I'm selling as many AR-15s as I thought I would. No kidding. Yeah. And so this is – I've heard it called um, a number of times by a number of intelligent people that have a long time in the industry, a transition period. Mm-hmm. Um, I would imagine that people are going to have to start getting more creative in their marketing and sure. maybe actually do some marketing uh-huh. and not just rely on the fact that, that uh, everyone else is out of stock. Yeah. yeah. That they're selling, you mm-hmm. know, uh, pickaxes in a gold rush. Right. 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 So what, what do you think about that? What's your perspective yep. of where, so where we sit at in the industry right now? I would break that into a couple of things. The, the truth is, is it's always good for one or the other. Yes. There's always good business going on. Mm-hmm. And anybody who, you know, looks at the economic or, and, or social economic slash political, you know, sort of like famine and stuff. You know, we're still in an incredibly stable economy, right? Yes. Um, it, the winds have changed and it favors the buyer more than the seller right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that is, that's good news too, right? So the buyer gets to make some choices and have more say over what's going to happen. Those are all positive things. I never look at it as a negative. Yes. Um, you know, 
as a, as a consumer, I'm stoked now because everything's on the shelf. There's no lack of 22 long rifle, you know, yeah. all those things. These are all really positive things. Same here, man. I was just at uh, Arms and Arms the other day yep. and you know, they've, uh, they've got like all their magazines out and everything. Yep. It's like, you can buy a 60 round D mag or D 60, yeah, buy five of them today. If you, you want buy five of them and they're just like yep. sitting there, like yeah, you no. couldn't find magazines for the longest time. There's air 15s yep. on the wall, the walls. Yep. And there's there's the fun stuff too that you can buy now because you're not worried about that AR-15. We going had a away. sale on 22 long rifle a month ago. Weird, right? <laughs> so I mean that's really really positive stuff. So I mean honestly, from like my perspective as it relates to my clients, I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton was a great choice. Yes. I mean, if you just want to go straight to the yes. like financial side of things, and I feel like a lot of a large part of the industry. Either was gambling on that, yep. or oh, I'm sure they were, or, or I know they was were. Uh, hoping for that. Yeah. So I had clients come to me and say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build up like a thousand uh, lower receivers and have them on hand." And I'm like, "Nope. Well, why? Because the only option you're gonna have is either to sell them at bargain basement prices, um, because you you gambled wrong, mm-hmm. and then you're you're gonna be doing it just to cash flow your loss, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or you're going to end up over selling them overpriced because you're you've been sitting on the cash too long and the only way to make any money then you know you're you're out cash so you've capitalized it you can't do something else you're losing money every day they're sitting on the shelves and then they blow up you're going to sell them for more than they're worth and that makes you um, I'm going to try to keep my language clean here but it makes you an asshole yes. <laughs> um, that's true and so either way you lose right because that is not who you are right i mean any company that's out of alignment with their truth is out of alignment with their customer period. You know, confession's a great word. It's just, a, you know, your confession, <laughs> confession is just you agreeing with what's true. Ooh. Right. And so, and so if you're not, if you're not able to look, you know, if you're not able to know who you are, assess who you are, and then deploy that, um, in some way, it doesn't matter how, you know, it doesn't matter how good your stuff is, right. You got to have a good product and you have to deploy it to the audience in a brand, um, you know, brand is a funny thing. Everyone talks about it like it's really, it's like mythological, you know. Mm-hmm. It's simple. It's how you see yourself versus how others see you. And then however much those are in alignment is how good your brand is. It's that Venn diagram where they That's right. line Every, up, right? Everywhere in the middle, everywhere they, can, they overlap is where money is made, right? Right. And so the further out of alignment you are, the less, the less of your potential money, whatever the top of that is, is being made, right? And so, you know, when you're looking at, sponsorships or advertising or how you put yourself out there or, or whatever, you know, or how you even answer the telephone. You know, if you, if you're telling everybody you're the well-lit friendly gun store like Arnzen and you just answer the phone and they're like a schmuck, well mm-hmm. now you're totally out of alignment. The experience they expected to have when they get there out of alignment with what they get. And then when they report that, cause in today's economy, everything's reported. Yes. Um, you're just pulling yourself further and further away from, from those alignments. Right. And so, you know, we don't look at brand like uh, the president and the mailroom guy both have the same mission statement every day. We look at it like, are you doing what you say you're going to do on a daily basis? And is that how you're showing up every single day? Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's what your brand really is, how you show up every single day. Mm-hmm. So it would be out of alignment with uh, your client, your client's uh, brand or their self-image to mark up a lot of AR-15 lowers. Yeah, I mean, in, in every, well, think how many, think how many businesses that are out of business today that we were like there, you know, they were the only ones with AR lowers. They're mm-hmm. selling them at twice the cost yes. and people were buying it. Um, or I ha- yeah, I have a list. Yeah. I have a list of people I <laughs> won't buy from because of shady. Well, there you go. Mess that they've done. Yep. And that, and that's the thing is, is, um, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a huge, and you're going to hear some references in my language around this, but I'm a huge fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm-hmm. And, and for those of you who don't know him, look him up. You should, right? His first book, Crush It, uh, set a lot of the tone for the conversation we're having right now. And I've, I've looked at a lot of his stuff. I like his way of thinking. I disagree with some, but that doesn't really matter. The, the, the thesis is correct, right? And, and you know, it, um, it, it's all about, um, you know, how you connect with people and what you say you're going to do and who you are. If you just go out and say, I'm a shyster mm-hmm. and I'm going to screw you, but I'll always have it in stock. I don't know that that's a problem. Yeah. As long as that's your truth and you follow it up, right? But if you are if you are a really good, you know, a good thoughtful company that's taking care of its customers and you occasionally have to do something shady because of a bad bet you made, you're mm-hmm. out of alignment with yourself and it's always going to hurt yeah. you. It's it's got to be about the long game, not about the short-term gain. If you really want a good thrival, you know, 
Gary's obsessed with legacy, right? Right. It's what does it look like when it's all over? Not not today. Who comes to my funeral? Who's gonna, yeah, he's who's times. gonna come to my funeral? It's like if you're having a bad day and you can't figure out how to like <laughs> how to like get it up and get doing it. He he just thinks think about what you know what it would be like if your mom died. You know, you're like, whoa, what? Well, that's true. Like, what, how would you spend your day? I mean, some of this is just age old stuff. How would you right. spend your day if it was your last day? Right. That's the way you live your life. That's playing the long game, and that is fundamental. I mean, today's marketplace. It looks like this, you know, actually in some ways, you know, grandma and grandpa know better how to market today than we do. The, the market, it looks like this, you know, in their, in their world, they lived in a town of a thousand. It was rural and, and mom wants to go and buy a blender for the family farm. And she's got two choices, Rite Aid or um, the fleet farm. Mm-hmm. And she needs a prescription. So she goes to Rite Aid. She buys the blender and they treat her like crap. That night she goes to her 4-H club, rotary meet, whatever, you know, her little thing is and tells Mm -hmm. all the little ladies there that Rite Aid screwed her on a blender. And from there for two, all blenders are sold at Fleet Farm. Right. As effectively where we're at right now. And our industry is about five years behind as it relates to like marketing. And don't get me started on distribution. It used to be way farther behind. Well, it's catching up, but the speed is, I mean, of course it looks smaller because the speed it, that we're moving so fast that it's, it's collapsing the, the, Oh, I got the you. Spe- the gap. The gap. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the gap is the so same. So when you say you're five years behind, that's a significant amount. Yeah. So- like, like if you went back right now and you did everything Under Armour was doing five years ago oh. on your Facebook, yeah. if you copied everything they did, you'd be cutting edge in the firearms industry. Ah, Note to self, go to Under Armour, Facebook. Yeah, no, well, that's the thing is, it's like, that's the cool thing about this. So usually you want to talk about opportunity, whether you're a sponsored shooter or a company or whatever, you don't even have to be, like, you don't have to be as good as Under Armour is today. You have to be about as good as Under Armour was three to five years ago, you know? Huh. And I just that's hedged a little, but let's just call it that for the sake of argument, you know? Sure. And if, you, if you're doing basic things, you know, video, which, like, there's no excuse for not doing video today. I mean, that's the thing is, is like five years ago, those guys had to have a budget to do video. Yeah. Well, so funny story. When we did a, um, a video with uh, Adam yep. where he was um, helping me select my gear for the um, We Defy running gun that I was going to shoot in sure. Texas. Yep. And uh, before before we had met in person, we had talked on the phone. And uh, we're like, oh, let's uh, let's do something when we're in Texas since we're both going to be there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. So I got this. Or I said, I got this idea. And you're like, cool, I'll film it. Right. And I'm expecting you like come out with like headset and like boom mics and a you know a, a dude to hold the camera. And yep. you're like, no, nah, here's my iPhone. Yep. Yep. And the iPhone took really, really good video. Yeah, so, so it's already is, compressed for that that algorithm. I mean it's yeah. it's ready for it. It looks better than my good cameras do when I go direct to like YouTube or yeah. especially direct to Facebook. And and that's like a perfect example of yep. there's no excuse anymore, right? No, there's none. I mean and, and I like so um you know even a couple of years ago, I carried around with me, and I still have my flight cases full of cameras. There are reasons for the big cameras, depth of field, things like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you're shooting close up, um, these these are incredibly good. You know, if the sun's out, they're incredibly good. You don't really – the hot lenses and stuff start to come into effect when the lighting isn't so good or right. you need a broader depth or you need a very specific microphone to get good audio. There's plenty of days where I get crap audio because of the wind and the rain and whatever, right? So I'm fortunate enough to have enough events to be like, I'm just going to call it on this one, yeah. you know, because I know next Wednesday I can get what I yeah. need or I could stage it for Thursday or yep. whatever. But um, So firearms industry is five years behind. There's yep. Video is something that, um, that uh, companies and shooters should be doing. Yeah, well, I, so you talk about video. I mean, and again, this goes, and this gets into like some of the, the tactic stuff. But you know, right now, um, Facebook is heavily indexed on video because mm-hmm. you know they have an interest in in taking out the companies that they can't buy. Right. Right. So um, they bought Instagram. Right. Um, and then they tried to buy Snap, and Snap wouldn't sell. So then they launched My Stories and Instagram, which murdered the the raising the the growing demographic yeah. on Snapchat for the short term. And they can't get their hands on YouTube because it's owned by Google. Right. So if you look at some of the architecture on Facebook today around uploading video, it's starting to look pretty good. Tags and descriptions Mm -hmm. and some other things. Now, there isn't really the ecosystem yet around searching video like I think that they're going towards. There's no there's no sort of compensation for creators like there is in YouTube either. Yeah, and I don't know that there should be. I don't know if there ever will be. Like, I don't actually, um, you know, we don't... um, 
Well, we turn it on and off a little bit, but I don't generally monetize my videos anymore. Right. Um, it, 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 you know, the small amount of money I can gain there versus letting it be totally wide open um, so that I can draw more attention because that's really this whole thing is about his attention. Right. Right. Um, isn't worth the trade off. So mm -hmm. and I've gone both ways now. I think we just if I remember right, I just re uh, or I added the monetization back because I saw a dip in viewership. And so I added it back. I was out of it oh. for like six months and I put it back in. I'm going to run it for like 90 days to see if it helps with my search. I wonder if uh, YouTube is putting you lower in the search because you're not Be making them yeah, any money. So, and I don't know for sure, but like, again, you can't get like you can't ha you know uh, you can't be romantic about any of this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Everybody wants to get mad at Facebook because Facebook is not two way friendly. Get over it. They're a company. They've made decisions as a company. Their brand is against firearms. They also happen to be the uh, cheapest attention on the market right now, accessible to almost everybody. And right. with a little creativity, a guy can do wonderful things. So I'll give you an example. Um, I cannot advertise for Arms and Arms on Facebook, right? because they sell guns, mm -hmm. like not even one degree of separation. They sell guns. Okay. So I have to do, I have to find ways to get their content seen in a noisy world. And the way Facebook works is they, for pages is they sample a section of your audience. And if they engage, like comment, share those sorts of things or view, um, now it's more than three seconds. It was like three seconds or less before it was included. Um, then they'll share it to more people and more people and more people. So the more engagement you're getting, the further your stuff is getting. So if Facebook wants more video, give them more video because yeah. no one knows the number, but maybe instead of a 10%, maybe you're getting a 20% sample now. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you could do is put banners up at matches and make sure that you're getting high quality professional photography and then people will share that or the match company, because I can promote a match on Facebook, mm -hmm. will use your banner ad, you know, so it's the shooter in front of the Arnzen banner, and then I boost that post to drive impressions for their logo. Right. In effect, they're getting de facto boosted posts. So there's a whole bunch of ways to do this stuff. You just got to be a little more creative, you know? So um, you mentioned Facebook likes video. Yeah. And Instagram is going to crush Snap. So I've noticed. Well, I didn't um, say Instagram will crush Snap. What I said was, is they were having this huge demographic shift towards an older audience. Yes. And they lost all that ground when stories came out for Got Instagram. Because now yeah. you don't need to jump platforms. That's because correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. So um, one thing that I've noticed is I, um, the Three Gun Show is really active on Instagram, which means me, right? Yep. Yep. Um, I love Instagram way more than Facebook. Yep. Uh, I have not done a whole lot with Snap. Yep. Uh, because I don't see my audience there. You're right. Um, Good assessment. Well, thank you. <laughs> so the uh, the thing that I've noticed about uh, Instagram is it will periodically tell me how many views through a, through a notification, a pop up notification. Yep. It'll tell me how many views a video that I posted has received. Yep. And that video can be six months old. Yeah. So it's is it pinging me and telling me, hey Dave, look how your video is doing. Post yeah. more videos, Dave. Let's well, see more videos. Yeah. So I mean, it wants it. Look, all of these sites. Um, they're just vehicles, right? Yes. And so part of that is is it's possible in that case that somebody went and commented on that um, that video. No did comment. Not. No new comment, no new like. Now, I've just not seen views. one come up six months later with additional views, although it's very possible that like you were at 98 views and the notifier is at 100 and somebody flipped back to look at your old stuff, kicked you over the 100 and then... Dude, I, I totally thought that too, yeah. but it's odd numbers. That's weird. It is weird. That's super cool. I'll uh, screen cap it next time. Yeah, please do. Because I mean, look, there's some very, very smart people mm -hmm. who employ some even smarter people <laughs> yeah. to create the algorithms. I mean, the reason... Well, so yeah. uh, social yeah. uh, wants to drive your behavior, right? Yeah. Oh, it's of course the reason that yeah. uh, there's a red dot on your um, your Facebook notifications. Yep. Yep. That means, yay, It wants candy. you to engage. So that's what I just assumed that it was doing, was pinging me and trying to get that in my head of like... It's very possible. This is what your videos are doing. Look how, look how popular your videos I are. I can't prove it, but I don't doubt it. I mean... Yeah. There's a robot talking to me, Mark. It, it, yeah, it is. Well, no, I mean, look, <laughs> uh, well, look at... I mean, I, you know, I don't want to get too, like, businessy with this because this is... But, but, I mean, look at Google. You know, Google search, right, mm -hmm. was a very linear thing before. You did yes. X things yes. and you got higher search. Yep. And then the more people that engaged, right? Well, today, it's, it looks far more like AI, because what they're, you know, what they're indexing now is, is your, um, 
new and compelling content. Now, you tell me how a computer understands what new and compelling is. <laughs> That's a good question. Okay, new I get. That's easy. That's timestamp, right? But compelling, and it does it in a series of things. Like it looks at you know the returns and then the the new the the repeat users time on target and stuff like that. And th and that's so some of that's just straight math. But I mean, it's it's becoming more and more intelligent to what you are. And I mean, your results on on Google and my results are going to be two different things based yeah. on where we've been. So it's weighing all that against your own personal preferences. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, fascinating. For, it took uh, it took a week for. Google to realize that I was not in Texas any longer. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. I, and so you know, you look at you look at um, you look at all this, and you, when it comes to social media, whether you're a company or an individual, I mean, the truth is, is that they're rewarding behavior, and if you're resisting that and being upset about it, you're out of the game until right. you get over yourself. That it really, I mean, I don't, you know, not to be yeah. short on this, but that's the truth. If you want to be there, you want to play, you want to monetize. <laughs> your activity, which is what a lot of people try to do in 3Gun, um, you have to play by the rules of the best options for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to write books every year? I mean, that's an option. You can skip Facebook and write a great book, but then how the hell are you going to promote it? Yeah, right. exactly. So, you know, these are, these are the times. There is no gatekeeper anymore. It's just your own creativity against someone else's uh, basic guardrails, mm -hmm. right? And that's what's so fascinating about right now. So, video. Yeah is hot. We constantly take videos of ourselves shooting matches. Uh, a dude running behind us, taking a three minute long video of the ROs back. Yep. And <laughs> then we, should we just post that directly to uh, Facebook? So directly to Instagram. Okay. So, so what is your intent? Cause intent matters, right? Mm -hmm. So if your intent is to put that out there so your buddies can see you shooting guns and I say blaze away with it, go crazy. Right. If your intent to, is to do that, to show that you're doing something for your, um, your, uh, sponsors, mm -hmm. um, I would argue it's almost narcissistic because really you're putting out content that isn't necessarily of any real value to anybody as it relates to learning about a product. And so I'd be very careful about that being your go-to for everything you do. Right. Put it out. Proof of life is an important thing when it comes to being a shooter. You need to show that you're shooting matches and there's no issue there. But to rely on that is the only way that you help your, your, your sponsor out is it's very self-important. It has nothing to do with the product, right? And mm -hmm. I know people will make the argument that, well, I shoot the gun great. Well, dude... You know, all of us are running really high-end guns or whatever, and all of us have good ammo, and all of us, you know, for the most part, anybody who's getting any help from anybody does. Mm -hmm. And so, you you know, if you really want to, like, push product or help a company um, achieve a higher brand, you know, a, a tag in the bottom under you shooting the gun in, a, in where they can barely see it on a grainy video is really not doing anybody any favors other than you. And that's okay because you got to build your own attention before you can bring it to somebody else. So I like it as far as Instagram goes for video. Um, that is not where I would do that personally. I like Facebook better for that stuff. This is my personal opinion. And that could change tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a month ago, I was like 90, 10 Instagram, Facebook for my clients. Today, I'm like 60, 40 Facebook. Because for whatever reason, in my little sphere, the attention shifted. I don't know why. Weird. Don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just wherever I'm getting the most attention. I think the trick with anything you do is, is to be as native as you can. So trying not to rely on, like, it's really easy right now to go on Instagram and, and then put up a one minute video and then share it over to Facebook and Twitter simultaneously and get that little right. bump. But then you're not taking advantage of the ecosystems that live in each of those, right? Because mm -hmm. Instagram favors high quality pictures. It favors, and, and hashtags is, is the, the driving force behind that, right? Mm -hmm. And a one-to-one -one square. Yep. Format. And, well, one to one square format. And there's a whole bunch of tactical things that, you know, and there's all kinds of options for getting that done. We didn't even have before. I used to have to run it through freaking uh, final cut pro just to get it square, you know, yeah. and now I can do it on my phone and it'll do the text for me, which is incredible. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and then Facebook um, does, it has a whole different thing and that's more of the tagging. Right. So like a better arc would be is like using my story on Instagram as your, going through the event or building up to it and going through it, right? Mm -hmm. And then releasing a full-length polished piece on Facebook because Facebook video... With the Instagram story? I would... I would No, I would, I would like... I would my story the thing, just the whole process, so the very raw, live what's happening uh -huh. with a couple of really cool pictures of you being at the event or something like that, 
right, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then I would take that whole thing and I'd go home and I'd edit it so it looked nice and then put it out on Facebook in full length, maybe three to five minutes, something like that. And then um, I'd cut that into smaller attractive pieces and square them and then put them out and then maybe put up like a, you know, hashtag your sponsor in there or something like that. So now they've got actually some clickable data and they mm -hmm. can see what you're doing too. And then you're getting a three week arc out of one event. Right. And if you line those over like two or three events in a month, you actually are doing a huge and a very, very broad job of covering your sponsor and yourself and everybody else involved. And that, that is far more powerful in the social world than, than just, I just shot this stage and man, did my, you know, at Armalite rifle do awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm, it's, it's the Armalite, but yes, yeah, sorry. At the Armalite <laughs> rifle. But, and that's, that's where I'm getting at with this is just like being more creative thinking about it. And mm -hmm. that's one formula. There's a hundred ways to do it. I mean, you know, and then in our world, we do that with all of our clients. The difference is I've got more tools and people, right? So when I right. make the video, it's like 10 minutes long. And then it goes up on YouTube on Wednesday. And then on third, you know, and then I publish that to my captions people and they caption the whole thing for me. Then I publish the whole thing on Facebook with the captions, which are also searchable. Mm. Yeah. They are? Yeah. And then I, then I take the captions and I put them on the video and cut it into squares and in segments and then border it so it looks really nice and then put the one minute segments promoting the original video back. Now, all of my numbers have gone down. Um, on any individual source, like I get, you know, if I had a thousand views before on YouTube, it's 800 now, uh -huh. but I'm getting 1200 on Facebook, which I never got before. And then I'm getting all these views over here on Instagram. You aggregate all those and you've got this really chunky um, burn on just a day's worth of work. Right. And so that's, you know, that's taking it to the next level. And there's another level. I don't even know what it is. I'm trying to figure it out right now, <laughs> you know, but that's the constant game is trying to stay ahead of that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. that, that is a more effective way of getting through it. And all you're really doing is documenting your life. You're just deciding like whether it's, it's raw Instagram story. It's a great snap. Put it on Instagram picture. It's a really good, compelling, polished piece. Put that on Facebook. Right. And then we want to re-promote all that for a week. So we cut it up and go back to Instagram and use Instagram video to go back. And that, that whole mix drives incredible attention. And that's all we care about. Right? Right. It's people's attention. That's it. It's that simple. So when – let's let's talk about that real quick. The Or not real quick, but let's kind of shift gears like a little bit. Yep. If you're, say, from a sponsor shooter – perspective yeah you're trying to get attention what do you want to do with that attention right so you are a sponsor shooter or you're trying to get the attention to get the sponsorships mm, i was saying uh um you are a sponsor shooter okay because I, I i can understand what you want to do with that attention if you're trying to get sponsorships you're yeah. trying to build your personal brand yep. to then go promote that brand to a uh, potential sponsor yeah absolutely so if you're trying to do the best thing you possibly can for your your client you know with that's what they are right mm -hmm. they're yep. paying you money to do something um, the first thing you do is you ask them what they need, right? It seems novel, but it doesn't happen. I was just on the phone this morning. We have a match coming up and, and with a sponsor that's going to be doing this match. And I called them up and I talked to them for almost an hour about what's important to you. What, do you, what are you pushing right now? Because mm -hmm. we got six weeks, you know, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff for you. What does that look like? How do I get access to your videos and pictures? You know, will you spoon feed me content? You know, because like I don't want to have to make it all if I don't have to. I mean, that's right. just truth, right? And um, and then okay, now going the other way, will you promote my match? What do you need from me? What can I do for you? Set some expectations so you know what they need or want, right? Uh, we can talk about the economics of sponsorship if you'd like to, but the basic thing is is they're exchanging goods or money for attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then your job then as a sponsored shooter is to do a series of things. And obviously you have to go shoot guns, right? So they want you to do 10 matches this year. Make sure you do 10 matches, you know, try to find matches that are maybe underserviced. Maybe you don't squad with all your friends. Ooh, that's are, a big one I see. Who are spoken for, right? That's a big one I see. Because that's one thing is, is like everybody wants to hang out with their buddies. And I get that. And maybe you pick a couple of matches a year that like, you know, Blue Ridge is my match. I go down there and I just hang with my boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then when I go to the, you know, Eastern Regional, I'm going to find a squad of people who are not sponsored, who are um, susceptible to change, mm -hmm. you know, and go be an agent of change for my client. Right. And then show up and ask questions and let them borrow your gear. As far as I'm concerned, if, if I give you, if I'm, 
you know, one of my clients and I give you a rifle for the year, it doesn't belong to you until you've paid for it. You haven't paid for it until I've gotten my 10 matches and my attention. Mm -hmm. It's a loaner. So loan it. (laughs) You know, let people try it and play with it and pull the trigger and let them shoot a stage if they want to or whatever, you know. I mean, everyone's got their own limits on this stuff, but, and I get, you know, no one wants to hand off a match gun during a match, but, but there's opportunity there and we all know there is. Sure. Look look for the way, not the, not, not the thing you won't do, right? Yeah, well, I'm fortunate with, what I do that I can travel with multiple rifles. And, and so I've got that ability. It's super cool. And maybe that's what you need to do. And maybe you go to your sponsor and say, Hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable handing out my match rifle. Would you send another gun that I could have just always on hand as a loner? And then maybe right before the match, you send out a, a, a blast on the, the match page that, um, Hey, I've got a loner rifle available. If you want to bring a buddy, a new guy, he can use it for the match. Or if your gun goes down, here's my Instagram page, message me and I will get that rifle to you somehow. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a bazillion cool ways to like make this stuff up. Right. Yeah. But it's just be open to the possibilities and the formula that worked two years ago, which was basically putting out, you know, cool images of yourself and tagging all your buddies. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't get through the noise. Right. I mean, I flip, you know, on the rare time I do consume like normal people. Um, <laughs> well, I can't, you know, I mean, there's, I, I, the companies collectively are, have around a million people that we're following or follow us. Mm-hmm. And if I try to consume on Facebook, it's like, I, just, I mean, uh, you just, it's really weird actually is what it is. But <laughs> Um, so I, I consume through filters, you know, so people always ask me, did you see my post? And I'm like, did you tag me? You know, yeah, I don't know yeah. if I did or not. Right. So, um, and then I, I'll, I'll make a point to go and look at it. Right. But it's hard for me to look at, and I can only imagine what some of these really big marketing companies, oh, are. Yeah. it's gotta be insane. Can't, yeah, so, I can't even imagine. I, um, I use a uh, newsfeed eradicator, um, to turn it off when I'm trying to work. Interesting. Yeah. And it, it gets completely gets rid of the newsfeed on the PC. Yeah, you can still see your notifications. You can still do the things you need to do, but you don't see that the that's really newsfeed cool. at all. Sometimes yeah. I forget to turn it back on, so I miss a ton of yeah interesting have, discussions on I the have, three gun groups. And I have stuff. Hootsuite Enterprise, mm-hmm. which is like a top end kind of marketing tool, you know. And basically, all of my companies and my personal life are in there in these streams, <laughs> and I and I have it. It's told what I want, what I I'm actually interested in right now. And then when I so I the way I consume social media is is like if I'm working with a client and they're really interested in 300 blackout, that's all our tags are. And then my whole stream is people who are engaged or potentially I don't know yet. So I can go intercept them talking about 300 blackout. Interesting. My personal life is very similar. And so you know, I have my, it's not 300 blackout. Um, I'm not that cool, but it's, you know, that's how I keep an eye on that, you know, and that, that makes it possible for me to consume without like just drowning, you know? And, yeah. And, interesting. And, but that, that's why Facebook survived and Twitter hasn't is because Twitter put no regulations on consumption. So it's just this blur. Yeah. And yeah. they're on their way out. You know, everyone's mad at Facebook for doing that, but at the same time, Facebook's still relevant. So it well, a, I was know? ticked off with Instagram doing that too, yep. because it used to be that you could put a, you know, a picture out there. And as long as you could do it at the proper time mm-hmm. when your audience was engaged, yep. then you got, Thousands of likes, yep. hundreds of likes, whatever yep. it was. And now it's like, you know, half the people don't even see your stuff anymore. I love the idea of scripting it in time. And if I was representing one product, I'd probably be a lot more careful about that than I am. But I will tell you that today, as it stands, I post when I, I'm excited about it. Yeah, same here. And so it's like, you know, <laughs> if it's if it's 7 in the morning, and, it, and I'm often surprised at how well some of those do. But I, I just figure it's all about energy. It's all about shaking trees. It's all about just making a mess and, and then cleaning it up. You know, I mean, it's all about just playing, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I feel like playing, I play. If I don't feel like playing, I don't because, frankly, I'm boring, you know? Yeah. And so that's no fun either. That's true, That man. index is poor. I, there's a some really smart guys out there that would disagree with that. And, yeah. and they're probably right. And in fact, they are right. But there's some truth around um, the speed at which you get material out. Yeah. And, you know, winners win. Um, and it's usually a, a good speed result. And so I just, I just pump it out. I don't think too much about it. Interesting. I used to uh, get real wrapped around uh, uh, scheduling posts and yep. stuff like that. Yep. Um, and I don't know if this talk is interest to any of the uh, shooters, but. but may um, not be. I think some I think some of the higher level shooters or not shooters but higher level marketers in the shooter space yep. do use uh scheduling uh yeah, they do. software. Absolutely. You can tell. Yep. But um but with Instagram I've kind of gone away from that. Like yep. I'll schedule the the podcast post like hey there's a new podcast. Yep. Um 
so I can, you know, type it on a, key, a keyboard and everything. Yep. But I'm I'm the same way as you. It's like I'm going more toward immediate things of like this is happening now. Yeah, this is, you know, it's polished material. I can understand some scheduling around. But so far, the truth for me has been the more native I am with the, the vehicle I'm using, mm -hmm. the better my result. Right. So I actually have this. I spend a fair amount of money a month on, on Hootsuite. Mm -hmm. It does nothing outbound anymore at all. It used to do oh, a ton. really? I don't, I, don't, I don't schedule or outbound at all with it anymore. I do it. We literally have guys in the field, including myself, with uh, iPhones, and, mm -hmm. and it all happens in real time. And that, and that seems to be, uh, well. Well, when you look at Instagram, it is a mobile platform. It, well, yeah, and, and the, the more regulation, the better, as far as I can tell, as it results to response. Right. You know. Well, and and it being a mobile platform, it's not intended for you to shoot a um, you know a super high quality photo with your Canon DSLR, and then you know edit yep. it in Lightroom. Yep. And then upload it to yep some sort of in, service, and then upload it to your phone, and then upload it to Instagram. Yeah, in fact, and that's what it looks like, and it's not always worth doing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I agree with you. Um, I think. Um. Well, it's social. Yes. Right. And so, yes. you know, and, and when I talk about social media, I'm also talking about how you behave in the dirt at the match. Right. That mm -hmm. is also another huge part of this. You know, it's everything. And then and then there's this vehicle for when you're not at the match to to do stuff, you know, and that's what this is all about. And it is a social environment. So, you know, I always ask people, it's like, OK, well, you told me you, you posted 20 things this month or whatever. How many people did you go and talk to? Mm -hmm. or did you search the hashtag? Arm, you know, the Armalite and then find out how many conversations were being had and without trying to sell anything to anybody, just saying, Hey, I've also had that experience mm -hmm. or I get it. Or have you tried this before? Like, are you doing that? Because if you're just pushing content, especially as an individual and you're not engaging, you're, so you're expecting people to engage in your stuff, but you're not engaging in yes. theirs. You're a narcissist. You're playing in your own sandbox. That's exactly right. And so that's not being social at all. So, you know, Gary talks a lot about not closing on the first date, right? You know, it's like 19-year-olds do that, right? They just try to get in their pants on the first date. Well, right. you know, usually it's up with a slap or whatever. You know, it's, it's taking time. It's like anything else. You don't walk into someone's house, meet them the first time, and ask them for a loan. <laughs> right. Right? You know, you, you get to know them, you, you know, and then over the course of the conversation, you find out they're looking to invest in something. And, then, you know, I mean, that's how real life works, right? And so all you have to do, it's real easy, is be yourself with a phone, right? give up this pretense that this is somehow different than how we're behaving. Yeah. You know? It's like we're all, you know, you act a little different at church than you do sure. at the bar, right? And so, you know, if that's the case, then you act a little different on Facebook than you do on Instagram. It's still wholly yeah. you. It's your brand. It's just your behavior. You might be a little looser on Instagram or especially on my story. Where well, Facebook, you know, it's going to last a little longer. You, you know, know I, I tell you that when I started the podcast, I mean, you asked about, swearing before we started the yeah. podcast <laughs> i'm doing pretty good i'm you're not doing gonna lie. great yeah. <laughs> <laughs> having spoken with you outside of the podcast you're doing great yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh when uh when i first started it started the podcast you know i i was really conscious about how i was being seen and um held back a lot of dave for sure the um the sake of what I wanted to be perceived as, I think. Yeah. Um, I could see that in your evolution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yep. for sure. And so that was definitely the case on social media and mm -hmm. stuff like that. With Instagram stories, I'm having so much fun. And uh, my buddy, Sean Burroughs, I got to thank for yeah. a lot of this. He, you know, basically, this is funny because you don't need permission to do anything in life. But he gave me permission to, you know, allow more of myself in there but, by just constantly how much pecking that, at me. Whether you needed it or not, how much did that mean to you? Oh, it totally did. It, it, it took off all did. the shackles, Yeah, right? it's like, well, yeah. you, you mean people want to hear from yep. me and yeah they do like i yep. i i i can um you know throw on the instagram story all these pro shooters shooting but then me joking around about how i got kicked out of arnzen because they were closing and yeah. it's because i'm a texan right you know no, that, 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 see, that, that gets me like so endearing though it is and that gets me dms and actual interactions with real people and stuff well okay so let's we just talked about it's just got to be you but with a phone right mm -hmm. so you with a phone has the same morals that you have the same guardrails yes. right like i mean you know you you can't make everybody happy that's not possible there's some people who will never buy your stuff so stop trying to sell it to them right that's okay you know mm -hmm. and you're going to say something it's a guarantee that's going to cause a problem for you someday if you keep 
growing at the pace you're growing right now. Right. It's how you respond to it that's important because every single human being on this planet makes mistakes, says stupid things, puts themselves in awkward positions, right? This is no different other than the fact that it's got a little more longevity than, <laughs> than you know, the, the hazy memories of a, of a drunken party, right? So, right. But the truth is that's all real. That's all out there. That's all your truth, you know? And if you're, if you're being really respectful of who you are, that means you get to be who you are, right? Not some caricature of yourself that only has the best parts, yeah. right? And social has long been seen as like only my best looking photos and yes. only this and only that. Leave in your mistakes. I just woke up like this. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you're trying to do a great picture for Instagram, n no, that should probably be super tight. Or yeah. when you're trying to do a two to three minute really good instructional video on how it's so much easier to reload your shotgun with product Y, mm -hmm. that should look good and be tight. But then everything else can be like... Yeah, here's the 10 minutes before that. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. You know, shells flying everywhere or whatever, right? <laughs> my, my, okay, so this is, this is funny. You'll find this interesting. My best performing video on Instagram as far as views yeah. and engagement and likes is of me eating shit at Blue Ridge. <laughs> I tripped over a, a stump, and I did a full uh, head, uh, heels over head. Yep. Just went straight over oh. and uh, shotgun hit me in the back of the head and all that. Right. Most popular video on Instagram. Yeah. Most popular photo on Instagram is of a triple feed on a PCC I was borrowing. Sure. It's, all it is is, dude, it's it's me recognizing that I had a triple feed, stopping the practice session, getting the phone out, taking a picture, and then um, throwing or you know three rounds trying to go in the same place. Yeah, yeah. And then throwing that on Instagram yep. a day later. Why do you think that is? It allows vulnerability. It shows that That's true. It doesn't show your polish your polished self. Yep. Uh, with the with the triple feed, you know, people were trying to help me fix it. Yep. And you know, I I didn't really tell them like, hey, it's not my gun. I already gave it back or whatever. But I would also argue that there are far more people that can relate to you having a triple feed or eating it at Blue Ridge yeah. than they can to Rob Romero smoking it with yes. a PCC. Yes. And that that's the thing is that because that is true. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what like when I first made that first video, um, I watched all the stuff I could find on the Internet about three gun. And in those days, there wasn't a lot, you know, and YouTube mm -hmm. was still a little on the young side. And again, we've talked about being five years behind. Right. So. Sure, yeah. So um, I could find all kinds of pictures or video of people who really knew what they were doing. It's the same names as today. Just. <laughs> You know, everything was happening so fast and they were so good at it. But nobody slowed down and showed me just how to like, this is your hand has to look like this when you quad load and you roll over and you pet the shell in. You retract your arm and you do it again. And my experience with this loader versus this loader is this. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing that, right? And, and that now here we are today, right? And so we've, we've gone a few years and we've got a lot of people out there with a lot of access because of yes. technology changes yep. and things like that. And we're getting way, way more of that. And watch, look at our sport. Look at it explode. So if everybody was willing to be that vulnerable, can you imagine what kind of a gain we'd have as a sport? Yeah. You yeah. know, but most people we're a bunch of A type dudes, you know, and so not all of well, us want to leave our mistakes in and you know Yeah, there's there's also like a uh there's also like a culture, you know, if you're figure figure like uh, the top twenty, top thirty people at, at any match. Yeah. You know, here in uh Minnesota and in Texas and everywhere I've been, yep. there's a large amount of dudes that shoot really, really well yep. and can laugh at themselves and can, you know, joke around stuff. Agreed. But they're they're funny at matches. They're the vocal minority on social on yep. or not they're the non vocal yep. minority on social. social. Yep. So the other part of that is dudes that will look at that and say, You have no business teaching anyone how to quad load. You dump that quad on the ground. Awesome. Let them say it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just helps your engagement, but I, it, I think it's that's... Yeah, you're just helping me when you get <laughs> upset. I got to be honest with you. I think that's why uh, <laughs> people hold back yeah. on uh, that vulnerability yeah. is because they're they're um, afraid of being preyed it's upon. Fear. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's fair. So that is, again, if it is, if you are comfortable with, you know, if you've looked at yourself and you've said, and I, and I have my own fears, don't get me wrong. I, I don't, you know, you know me a little bit now. I don't fear much. I just, I say what I mean. You know, mm -hmm. I say it out loud. If you don't like it, I'm okay with that. It mm -hmm. doesn't bother me at all. I don't take that personally. It's just, we differ, you know, and some of this is the culture we live in right now. It's like, I, I watch these sponsored shooters. We were talking sponsored shooters. So I can go out on Facebook and someone's like, Hey, I'm trying to decide between the Geisley and the Timney trigger. 
and the next 300 responses AR are gold. AR gold's the only thing, and those other ones work. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, we can name, you know, Hyperfire, AR gold, Tim Need, uh, Geisley, I'm going to miss something. I've shot all, whatever. Those. Okay. all four of those you just mentioned uh, I've had in okay. guns. There's like six or eight of these triggers that are around 200 bucks plus that are like high end triggers. They're all awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're smoking. They will all light primers. They're all easy to manage. They're all very tactical feeling. They all are great. They're just great triggers. Well, and it's a, a good time to be in the sport, a good time to be a gun owner because there's, yeah. there's that many high quality options out there. But if you can't accept that, that just because it's not your brand, mm -hmm. that somehow that you have to, change their mind when they ask a very simple question you're not doing yourself or them a service i would say hey i'm blessed enough to shoot for hyperfire for example mm -hmm. um, but i've had my hands on both of those triggers and if it was between those two i would totally go with x yeah well it's just like uh you know you drive a, a nissan right yeah, yeah. you know it if if you were like, hey, Dave, I'm getting a, uh, a new truck. Yep. I'm thinking about going with uh, the Titan. Yep. Or the, uh, what the hell do I drive? GMC Duramax. Yep. What do I do? Right. You're like, you'd be fucking dumb to get that, that Nissan. <laughs> who acts like who that? Who drives is, a Nissan? But People don't do that in real life. No, but who does that in real life? And so but we no. get into this space. This is, again, be yourself on the phone. I mean, mm -hmm. it really is that simple. And, like, if we, if we could just behave – I mean, let's not get into where this has gone in politics, but we're in this strange world where we have some sort of a belief because we can hide behind the technology yes. that if you're not in my camp, you're against me. Mm -hmm. You're not – you shoot for Timney and I shoot for Hyperfire. Okay. <laughs> when we go out here and we play in the dirt together, we're all friends. And yeah. then we get on the internet and we argue about which one's better when the guy didn't ask a question about either trigger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. You know, like we got to do better than that, right? And that's the stuff that I see happening that like, t stop doing that. Be creative. Be smart. You know, mm -hmm. um, the internet is an amazing tool and it allows us to do incredible things. Um, and, you know, it's the Spider-Man thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, so it, you have this opportunity. Take advantage of it. Be the best self you can be out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be the person you want to be in the dirt. Like, I, you know, I always say back to the dirt because, like, if, if you behave the way you behave in the dirt um, at a, you know, on, on the Internet. Yeah. Like, what truly compels me about 3Gun, I just discovered this recently, and – um, and I've actually deployed this against the culture of my company. I've changed my whole company, uh, every, the way we behave based on this. I got started doing a, a, a version of CrossFit recently, and I, it's this group of people all working together, you know, to be the best they can be at that mm -hmm. sport. You know, we, we're like a squad, right? And yeah. Then, and it, it, it occurred to me that what I truly love about our game, it has nothing to do with the guns and the adrenaline and all that. It's this... You have two jobs on the field. It's to be the best squad mate you can and support each other in the shooting and the resetting and all the, the administration that has to happen. And then when it's your turn to crush the guys on your squad to the best of your ability, <laughs> yeah. and then as soon as your adrenaline comes down, jump right back on the squad. Right. And that is what makes our game so special, right? It's so, it's, it's so unique in sporting, you know? And so yep. why not be like that? on social media, you know, support the squad, support, you know, do your thing and then be the best you can be everywhere you go. How can that possibly go wrong? Mm -hmm. I just don't see it can. So let's, let's switch gears again here. Yeah. seems like a good place to switch gears. So before we started talking, we had a conversation about the economics. Yeah. And the economics of sponsor shooting is, is uh, pretty phenomenal. I don't think we've quite touched on it on the podcast before. Most of the time we talk about like, uh, you know, how to deliver mm -hmm. content for your sponsors sure. that how to be a good representative, stuff like that. So yep. let's, let's talk about that. One of the examples you gave was like a 2011 pistol. Yep. Um, 2011 pistol from a lot of places, is like 3,500 bucks. Let's call it that for now. Okay. Yep. 3,500 bucks just for round numbers. Sure. So in, in your example, you said maybe there's, um, six to seven hundred dollars in profit on that. Sure. So now you need to six times seven. You need to s um, sell six of those pistols for your sponsor to break get even. enough profit to even break even on providing you that pistol. Yeah, that's if right. that's your agreement with them. Yeah. So that um, was not. That's pretty eye opening when you look at that it, math. Yeah. So okay. So here's the way that this works. Um, first of all, no spreadsheets are allowed. Right. You just literally on a napkin figure this out. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
the sponsor gives you a $3,500 pistol, okay, mm-hmm. to use for the season. And his expectation, if it's a straight marketing cost, now there's a lot of other good reasons for sponsoring somebody, but in a straight marketing cost is he's going to make a profit on the investment, right? Right. Okay. So you are a tool of marketing. Get over it. All right. So um, you get the pistol. <laughs> You're a tool. Well, it's life, you know. I mean, you want more pistols, you got to sell more guns. That's sure. it, right? So, you get the pistol, you are now, you know, um you're now upside down. You you've got 3 grand worth of parts. Let's just say, just for keeping the simple, right? Sure. To cover the cost of not 3500, but the 3000, okay? Mm-hmm. And so yeah, you've got to sell 5 6 pistols in order to cover that cost. Now, there's probably some you know, the way I do the math is 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 it makes sense to cover my costs because if it does, I'm probably getting enough branding and some other like rollover I can't tie direct to make it um, a profit on my money. Mm-hmm. But if you're a company and you're investing, um, you know, three thirty five hundred dollars in an individual, right, you're expecting to see f- minimum four thousand forty five hundred dollars in your return. Because if I bought an ad, I wouldn't buy an ad and lose money on it. Right. I would stop buying that ad. Right. Well, why is a shooter any different? You're buying an ad. It's billboard space. And frankly, it's overpriced billboard space at this point. Mm-hmm. So, and if you don't believe me, you know, sit down and figure it out for each of your sponsors. How much should they give you? Run a 20% profit margin just to be kind, right? And then, and then figure out how much product you have to sell to cover that commitment based on what they gave you in product. Right. And if you're doing all those things and you're hitting, if you're economically neutral on their books for doing that, then you're probably doing a good job. Not a great job, but a good job then you're worth it. I would hire you again, okay? Because I'm probably making some money. But if I spend $1,000 on ads and I only make $1,100 at the end of the year, um, I'm pissed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I really am expecting to do 140 or 150% of my money when I, when I, if I do a really good job with a marketing piece, mm-hmm. right? So you're, not that you're bad or that you're um, not doing a good job or anything. It's just you're, the attention you're bringing to me is very expensive compared to other attention I could be spending money on. And when I give you a gun, I'm moving money out of other marketing or labor or any other place um, to put it in on you. So mm-hmm. I'm betting on you as a pony, right? right. And I want my pony to pay off. And so when I look at ponies these days, yeah, winners, you're, you know, they are always a good buy, right? But, um, but the truth is, there's only a couple of them. <laughs> so you're probably not a winning pony. You know, I need you to come in like third or fourth so that your opinion is legitimate. You know, whatever, not third or fourth. But, you know, you need to be in a certain percentage just so I can prove that your opinion is legitimate. You're going to, your exposure is at a certain level. And then that you're somehow driving product sales. And it is hard to quantify it. There are some new products out there that we're looking at to do that. Um, there's a company called Sponsored, which is interesting for those of you who are companies, um, you know, the, the sponsors. Mm-hmm. Um, you should look at that. It's pretty affordable and looks good. Um, but um, I haven't invested yet, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but those are the sorts of ways we look at this, right? Now, from the sponsor side, you know, I have clients who, who after I show them the math, say, I don't care. I just want all my friends to have cool guns. Right. Awesome. Yeah. But know that's what Perfectly you're, legitimate reason. And that's right. But as a shooter, you should know that that's why you're getting them. Because next year when he has a bad year and he doesn't know where to spend the money and you don't get it anymore, you're not butthurt. Because yeah. the, frankly, you were on the friend deal last year. Right. And frankly, the first thing to go when the money's tight is the friend deals. Right. So just everybody needs to know where they are. Be on the same page. That's why I think a document is like mandatory. It doesn't have to be like... You know, you don't have to sign it in blood. It's just like, hey, I'm going to hook you up with a gun, a handgun. And, you know, to, to know that we're going to, you know, this disagreement uh, automatically renews every year if five guns are tied to you. And we would like to see X, Y, and Z happen on social media in a certain amount of events. You know, sign John, countersign, you know, Jason. We're good. We're good to go. That's yeah. simple. And then expectations are on the table. And you know how few of the companies, even though I've been telling them three years they, uh, to do that, do it. It's almost none. Yeah. And and why is that? It's fear. fear. You know, fear of what? It's it's honestly it's um it's fear of the truth of the economics of the matter. Oh, okay. I don't think anybody wants to look at it. Um, you know, sponsors that are sponsoring major events, it's getting. You know, we all see the prize tables drying up. Part of that saturation, but part of that is that, frankly, the match directors are doing a piss poor job of returning that investment. You know, 
a great company gives you twenty thousand dollars worth of product and cash to make your event happen. That's a lot of damn money. It's a lot of money, and you have one shot, one shot, three days, at making that valuable for them. Banners ain't cutting it because most of those people are spoken for. Mm -hmm. If you can then broadcast that on social by having a good photographer there and maybe getting out to like ten thousand people instead of two hundred fifty. Okay, it's a little better. Still not anything close to twenty grand. Right. Right? And there's some reasons to do things for branding for these big companies that, that are worth to have some other value and frankly giving back charity is always something, you know, and that but that's what it is, man. And you know, you're a drain, you're a charity. Sure. And if you are okay with that, then keep doing what you're doing. But you're a drain on marketing funds for a company. At some point someone's gonna say, We're not doing that anymore. Right. And that's right. that's a that's a cold hard truth that people have to get comfortable with or someone else is going to put them out of business. Sure. You know, one, one thing I've noticed about um, sponsor coordinators, I guess you would call them. Sure. Is that what they're called yeah, in the company? Yeah. Um, it's someone who has either a personal relationship with um, a sponsored shooter mm -hmm. or a match yep. or has at one time or has a fondness in their heart for the nostalgia that, of that match. Yep. Or um, is involved in the sport themselves. Yep. That person moves on to greener pastures, pastures, uh -huh. or gets fired or transferred in, sure. in internal company. Yeah, if they're any good at what they do, Gone. they they move up and they're no, yeah. And then yeah, the yeah. other guy comes in, yep. and now that guy is a hunter, right? And he doesn't see the value. And in, he just wants to dump everything on Ava Shockey, and don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> it's a married woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, hey, that's a good that's a good bet. If you're betting on ponies, that's a good one. Yeah, you no. Know? Yep. So I, I look, we uh, markets the markets the market. It always makes yep. decisions. It's always changing. If um, you know, if you are not putting yourself out of business every year for your match, then um, then you're failing. You know, I mean, you should be looking at things. And that's that's one thing that's been cool about this ignite thing is is that this is this kind of low profile opportunity to try stuff, you know, and yeah. sometimes we blow it and sometimes we don't, but you know, the burn is never too bad. Right. Um, and if it works, then we deploy it down in Texas or at one of our bigger matches mm -hmm. or whatever. And we see how it works there and then we keep working on it, but it doesn't, none of that matters. It's, it's all about just, um, the return on value. And if you do everything you can to provide more value than you're given, you mm -hmm. will always have a job as a sponsored shooter. Right. You will always have prize tables as a match, you know? Um, and yeah, and, and look, you have a couple of bad years, but you've had this really successful match for 10 or 15 years, something like that. Yeah, you deserve a break. You know, you look what you've done. Look at, look at how much you know, you've provided value this whole way. And there is reason to continue to support something. But I think it's also acceptable to say, hey, this isn't where we're going. And so what we would recommend to you is to make these changes to your business model as a sponsor shooter or a match so that we can stay in alignment and we can continue this relationship mm -hmm. instead of just being like, well, that didn't go well. Ooh, that went worse. We're done. Yeah. But no one said anything. It's like a marriage, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. but it's just like one day you woke up and you weren't in love anymore, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's, that's not a good way to do business either. And so, you know, you just, I, I do think though that you know the mar the marketplace is so good and so thriving, and I and I have so little fear around its growth mm -hmm. it, on its own because it's such a great sport. But I do think that there's going to be less toys to play with on a per match basis. There's going to be less toys for shooters because they're spreading it out really far. I mean, you know, how many? You know, I'm using I'm picking on Armalite because they're your sponsor. And I'm trying, sure. You know, um, and they're an amazing company, and and that three gun rifle of theirs was a game changer for for the the space. Absolutely. And, and I've done some reviews on it. You can reference that at Hawkeye Ordnance on YouTube. But um, it, you know, how many rifles can they give out in the three gun? Because the truth is, is for Armalite, the three gun, the gamers, is like five percent tops of their overall income. Yes. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not privy to the numbers. Yeah. But um, well, I, I know totally, what it is for some other companies. I totally see how small of yeah a footprint we have as three gunners. Guys, we everyone yeah. I know is a three gunner. He, he, everyone I associate I know, with on a I daily know. basis. And is so a you have a really, really <laughs> effed up version of reality. <laughs> exactly. as it relates. That's the point. But the, the fact of the matter is, is three gun could be removed from the budget of even a middle sized company. Mm-hmm. And its income 
mm-hmm. and its income, and it would still show up as nothing but a blip in the margin for them. Right. They and could eliminate like paper clips and save more money. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if they cut their entire quarter million dollar output for their two hundred thousand dollar input, and that's probably about where the numbers look right now. You know, whatever it is, but mm-hmm. they're taking a loss for most companies on this. It's affecting other things that are growing, but just the the product per you know advertising dollar spent skewed. Yes, they could remove all of that, and it would the the bookkeeper would be like, "Well, that's weird. Uh, we'll blow that off for a year and see what that looks like next year." And then that quarter million gets spent somewhere where. It was far more potent and powerful in like the hunting space. Ava shocking. And, and then he's like, yeah, you, you put that quarter million on Ava and, and she boosts up all your other sales, which are 97% of your, your sales. Mm-hmm. And the next year, the bookkeeper revisits the number and goes, oh, we're up 10%. I guess that was just a blip. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's how small we are. And so if we're, you know, if we're not careful with what they're giving us, um, they're going to take away their toy someday. Mm-hmm. Right? So how do, we, how do we be careful, like good stewards of what they're giving us? Um, Get a pencil and a piece of paper and figure out the value of what you're getting and what it's going to take to pay that back and do everything you can to make sure that happens. Because if, if you get to that neutral place, then everyone's going to be able to make a case for continuing to do this because at least there's a return on the investment. Mm-hmm. If you can get over that, even better. But if we start making them more money, they'll invest more. Right. Right. And the other thing, too, is just naturally we're going to have an ebb and flow here. We might have too many matches right now. I mean, when I started doing this five years ago, it was right at the I mean, we were still trad loading, you know. Yeah. yeah, And I had to drive up to six hours to shoot five matches a year, six matches a year. You know, today I can drive uh, within an hour and shoot six matches a month. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane. And and we had a 47 stage shotgun. I mean, stage at the trigun i mean you know the the evolution is just insane it's yes. it's unfathomable you know so there's going to be some bumps and some stuff in here but you know uh, overall i just think that if the shooters would really wake up and look at what they're getting and how to repay that mm-hmm. and the companies would actually do the math and and say okay um this isn't making sense let's fix it right and i think they're up for it then um then we can not only be profitable for each other, but there'll be more gear, more stuff. We might lose a few matches and gain a few along the way, and we'll definitely lose some shooters and gain a few on the way. That, that'll that never change. But if the economics could get even stronger than they are right now, other than we're still living on, like, we suspect that yeah. this investment is doing X. Yes. And um, it's getting easier to figure out what the truth is, guys. Right? We're able right. to quantify these things far better than we could even a year ago. At some point, someone's going to go, oh, those numbers don't work. So they're either going to dump it or fix it because those are the only two choices in business. Hmm. Interesting. If so, you want to stay in business, that is, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. So um, back to the example that you used of uh, match, dire- match directors are getting you know, $20,000 in product right. and support to put on this, this big event. Yep. What can a match director do that would – give a better return on investment for oh sure that, so uh, that sponsor okay well let's start with the simple stuff right the banner cannot be hung on the toilet anymore you know the banner cannot be you know start with the simple right the on-site stuff make it look nice spend some time look at your stage find out where the natural stopping points are when the staff is shooting and put your banners right there so that that pictures show the banners right because mm-hmm. that's far more important than where they look on site okay and then Spend a couple hundred dollars on a professional photographer to take all those pictures and give them away for free. So they go near and far, you know, they mm-hmm. go as far as possible, right? Mm-hmm. Basic stuff. Maybe even have a videographer or a drone flying or do live Facebooks or whatever. Just any opportunity to show off what, it, you know, the, the banner, the logos on site. Do some features on these people. Make some Facebook videos and put them out, you know. I mean, just some of this is just really basic stuff. It just gets missed because, you know... F- Rightly so. They've got other things to do. But, you know, you can't miss them anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you're interacting with people. Do a good job of putting on a match where there's lots of information going out. And along the way, you're trickling in this, you know, make sure you're supporting our sponsors. One thing I'm screwing around with right now, which um, I've had a fair amount of resistance to from certain people, and some are really into it, um, is hold out some top prizes. And instead of rewarding just the top shooter, reward the guy who's the most aggressive on Instagram that weekend. Right. You know, 
start um, start rewarding the behaviors you want to see happen because you can only be so good at it. And Facebook, for example, limits some of your reach, right? But if you get a really influential kid out there who knows he's going to be 80th but has an opportunity to win a gun and he's an influencer at home mm -hmm. and he goes out and he goes crazy over the weekend on your product then he wins it and then he shoots it all season and takes pictures of it and puts it out i mean sure. you're talking about a year's worth of data coming yeah. out of that right so um those are the types of things you know look for some ways to get that i mean there there is no ceiling on this and that's the thing you know it, it if you're willing to put in the effort, create some even mediocre content and put it out regularly. And then even more importantly, get that force multiplier of the shooters doing it for you. Mm -hmm. Then you will go incredibly far. You know, and we, tr we I've, I, look, and I've had some incredibly failed experiments with this. Last year, a certain beverage company um, was going to help us out. And we cannot say their name on the, on the thing. But a uh, beverage company was going to help us out. And we had, had a whole... Brondo. <laughs> With Shasta, um, and, and so we, we had a uh, we had a we had a whole thing set up, and we asked all the shooters to just hashtag this hashtag all summer. They were going to track that, and we could not get them to do that. And then could I not get the shooters to do that. Yeah, and then I, and on top, they did for a little while. They did a decent job. We just didn't make a wave. And then I, you know, I personally lost um, my enthusiasm for it as I it was like pushing rocks up a hill, you know. Mm -hmm. So and I let it go, and then we don't have them this year. Yeah. And that is the market telling me that either they're not that interested in that product being there or that we didn't do a good enough job right. or something, but there's some piece that was missing there and it ended up negative, right? Now, the cool thing is we still have a great relationship with them because we, we walked into it saying, we don't know. Yeah. We're willing, we'd like to try it. Would you be up for it? You know, and they were taking a foray into a, a, a space they're not used to being in by any stretch of the imagination. And they were looking for some top cover on that as well, right? Sure. So there were some limitations around what we could and couldn't do. That's why we had to go the hashtag route because we couldn't actually tag them. Interesting. So there were some things about that that were really cool, but we tried. So just try, you mm -hmm. know, find something. There's got to be some way. I mean, man, if we could get tap into the budget of, uh, you know, uh, whatever, Monster, for a yeah. year, they could fund the whole damn season, and it would show up as nothing for them on their on their line item for yeah. a club match, you know. Um, and if we thought we could do it, we we try because Adam loves his monster. He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so, and I've got the best partners in the world, man. Adam Maxwell uh, works with me with Ignite, and then Blair Steiny from Ordnance. Um, they're both shooters, you know. Uh, they're both great dudes. Adam's a very successful shooter. Um, and those guys, you know, they're, they're not like me on this. They're not naturally like this. They're more the engineer, quiet types, you mm -hmm. know. And, but they've made the effort to get better at it. And you watch, like, Amax, you know, Adam just, he's gotten better and better and better at being part of this whole thing. I mean, you couldn't get him to talk on camera three years ago. Really? How much talking has he done with you recently? We've done, like, seven hours of podcasts. Yeah, think. right? And so, like, Eight. that's him stepping out of his comfort zone to find a new space to help his sponsors out. And, frankly, what he's doing with you, it, it increases his profile. Sure. His profile goes up. Everything he does for PWS or, you know, any of the great sponsors, ORM Tech, or any of those companies that are sponsoring him. See how I did that? I snuck those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh, I know. Yeah. I'm not sneaking in. Anybody. People think so, they're fooling me, no, but I see no. what's going on. I'm just but, making a list in my head. But for, That's the, all. for those companies, just don't put them on the naughty list. <laughs> for those companies, for those companies, you know, his profile goes up. That's a positive, right? And that's yes. what his job is as a shooter. And he's not the type of guy to go out and just film a bunch of videos in his basement about loading and stuff. So he has to find different avenues. Pick yeah. your avenue. Maybe you're a good writer. Maybe you're a sweet photographer. Maybe you're good with a video camera. Maybe you should never be on a video camera. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Find your medium. Find what's comfortable for you. And then just, there's, there's no way you can do too much. You don't have time for it. No. No, I, I don't have time for it. And this is what I do full time. I know, right? And there's always more that I, that I can do. There's always more uh, stuff to put out, more pictures I took. Well, your evolution is one that people should look at, frankly. I mean, if you want to know what, the evolution this looks like mm. go check out three gun show from day one yeah and then sorry about that everyone well no <laughs> i mean look you you took a risk that you were willing to do something people were not willing to do yes or able and so you did it you pulled the trigger and you went for it and you stumbled and then you fell and then you did it and you did it again and again and again now you have a formula so at least the basic product your steak you know you can pump it out like 
much easier today than yep. five years ago or three years ago. Yep. And and now you're starting to look at other alternatives because um, the market's changing or the places are changing. And this is what every one of us has to do. This is not rocket science, man. Like I, no. I literally do most of my math for business on a napkin. Like I've posted these up before. <laughs> and like, I mean, I, I literally now keep a bunch of napkins because part of it is like it's <laughs> – it's humble, you know. It's basic. It's just yeah, like, it's does the, it make uh, sense on paper? The romance of using something like that. Totally, I'm super technical guy, and then I pull out a, a napkin and a marker, and my whole brain changes to something just very rudimentary, and I'm just like, dollar in, dollar out, yes. Yeah. Dollar in, dollar out, no. Dollar in, dollar yes, no. What do you think, client? I still want to do it. Okay. You know, show it to them 10 times. We're on uh, a video camera here. Um, you know, show it to them 10 <laughs> times and then throw it away. And at least they knew, you know, they did it with their eyes wide open. So, right. yeah, it's a fascinating time. It's really uh, anyone who's complaining about it right now is just um, not looking at the reality of the situation. There's so Dear. much more good than there is bad out of everything that's happening here. Mm -hmm. It just bad gets a lot of airplay, but it's such a small piece of the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about uh, something – that is not necessarily related to 3M, but like yeah. the industry sure. larger. Yeah. But I think, I think uh, it affects us anyway. Yeah. Gun bunnies. Oh man, it affects me every day. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is, uh, there's definitely like a perceived um, scarcity of resources. Sure. By a lot of people, yep. and a lot of people, are, a lot of those people are sponsored shooters. Yep. So they see anything that is provided to someone else as something that wasn't provided to them. Yeah, it's not a zero sum game, first of all, but yeah, you're right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. But it, yep. they, they, they look at it as a yep. zero sum game, right? Yep. So um, over the last two to three years, mm -hmm. there's been this just atomic explosion of just random uh, good looking chicks that you may not even want to talk to. Yep. Uh, holding firearms, mm -hmm. and eventually it appears on the outside that they now have uh, company support mm -hmm. to continue to produce Absolutely. scantily clad uh, pictures. Yep. What the hell is going on there? Okay. What does that mean other than now you have something to do well, while you're using the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <coughs> that wasn't the... Why is that funny? That wasn't the segue I was expecting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, there are a few things that always sell. It's much easier to make somebody angry mm -hmm. than feel joy. Yes. It is much easier to feel somebody make somebody feel horny um, than relaxed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, these are easy things to sell mm -hmm. naturally. I mean, car arms has got like the dullest pistol in the world and they've been doing gun bunnies since day yeah. one, right? Don't press. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's just basic stuff, right? So yeah, there's always going to be that. That's one. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry, you, yeah. you finish and then I'll, I'll no, I, I just would, I would go through a few things first. I mean, the, probably the number one thing is get over yourself if you don't like it, because mm -hmm. frankly, they're doing more for the industry than you are. Ooh. And, and you know, bold statement. Look, anybody who is out of the out of the space that wants to get into it is far more likely to, to get into it because um, some, I'm doing my best not to throw names in this, but some attractive woman they see who's legitimately shooting. Now, I mean, the, the just like the shot show babes or whatever. Yeah, I'm not that, talking that's about what I'm that. talking about. I'm talking about the ones that actually shoot guns. I'm not talking about the ones that shoot guns. Oh, you're talking I'm about I'm talking them. about the ones that shoot guns on Instagram and you never see the target. Oh, that, <laughs> okay. Well, that's fair. I mean, some of that is like if that's your business model and that's the kind of person yeah, you I'm are. I'm not talking about the lady shooters that okay. we squad with. Excuse stuff. me. Okay. Those apologies. are shooters. Yeah. Those yeah, are real shooters. Okay. I, I may not have made that quite as clear. Yeah. I, I guess I, I kind of look at the whole thing a little bit. I'm going to lump it all together. Um, and it, 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 this is a very bad idea on my part, but I'm going to lump them all together for a second. Sure. We need more women in the industry. Absolutely. No question about it. And showing women in the industry, um, you know, it brings more women into the industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The, the straight up like sex bombshell girls that don't really shoot. That's a marketing ploy. Right. And those companies will get found out. Does that work? It, well, it, it, it works. Does that sell it's, guns? it's a, it's a great short term play, but it's mm -hmm. not thinking about the big picture by any stretch of the imagination, because as the, the, you know, we've gone from three to maybe six or 7%, um, female shooters in the space. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in your, that's a, hugely growing segment there's more of them coming in on a percentage basis than, yeah. than old dudes like us you know tell you so, what that 2a heritage junior camp yeah, that i was at last yeah. week 
so the there was a lot of young ladies young in ladies. that class, yep. which is yep. cool to see. Yep. I mean, Absolutely. first of all, it's cool to see juniors, right? And yeah. the fact that there's a large portion of them that are uh, ladies, yep. fantastic. It's huge. And so if you're trying to service that audience and you're doing, you know, bombshell chicks at the, yes. at the things then or gun bunnies as you're calling them, then then frankly as I'm calling eventually them like the market will say to you no. Right. Okay, so right. that so don't worry about it, you know. It's not anything to be worried about. That's, it's just that's a blip always on the, sex the is always sold, right? You know, sure, and it, and it always will. And there are certain companies that will always service that space. And do any of us really take them seriously? No. I mean, you don't see you know the companies we know and love doing that. There's a reason for it, and they, they've some that have delved into it. Some, um, but I think most of them in the three gun space are investing in what they should be. Um, Hawkeye Ordnance, we um, uh, we have a junior shooter, Madeline Stewart, mm-hmm. her dad Thomas. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, and and you know she is the like you know ideal junior female shooter. She's yes. she's smart. She's a decent shooter. She is uh, well spoken. She goes out into the into the community and talks about Second Amendment and gun rights and gun safety. Um, you know her her parents have done a great job pushing her enough, but not being overbearing. I mean she you know she's like a really good, and and those gals when she's of the buying age and mm-hmm. she's out in the marketplace are not going to buy guns from companies that have uh, the gun bunnies out there because yes. that's, she'll never do it. You know, yeah. she's too classy for that. Right. Well, and you look at like the, uh, you know, the, the classy route, like yep. you were just saying, yep. the uh, Julie Gollbs of the world. Yep. yep. And then look at the other end of the spectrum, yep. the non-classy. And it's, uh, I, I, I just have trouble wrapping my head around the fact that, Someone is literally looking at, um, you know, what amounts to softcore porn on Instagram. Yeah. And saying, I'm going to go buy that firearm. Um, yeah. <laughs> does no, that happen? But it does happen. Uh, look, I, I'm proud to say that not one company I work with you deploys that tactic. Right. And that's what it is. It's a tactic. And tactics don't win wars. They win battles, right? You know, so... It's okay, you know. It's a, it's a bad long-term strategy is what you're saying? I would, I would, I would say that in the current marketplace, it, um, unless something... Unless a trend is completely missed, that that will be a bad long-term move. Okay. I think that um, you are – well, do you see it in the car industry anymore? You do it at the shows. You know, I'm not real big into the car industry anymore. Well, but, but the ads you see – I mean, no one watches ads anymore. But, I mean, if yeah. you, you know, you're not seeing – you know, that was a really prevalent thing, you know, for a lot, a lot of years. You know, they've moved away from it. The truth is women are making huh. the buying decisions in the home, even if the man is the three-gunner, right? Right. Um, you know, the, the, the numbers tell us that mom actually makes the buying decisions in the house, right? So dad's not shooting three gun without mom knowing it. I mean, right. we all know this is not a, you know, it's, you can't hide a 50, you know, it's not like we're hiding a 50 round box, nine millimeter from mom, yeah. you know, we're hiding a, a half a case, a pallet, you know? <laughs> a pallet right? So, you know, and if, and if mom sees that this is a bunch of like sex crazed freaks, you yeah. know, she's not going to be as engaged. I just don't think it's a good move. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, the sport itself is exciting. Yeah. The reason these companies are willing to take a dive on three gun is because short of military, this is the most exciting stuff they can get uh, content from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is their guns being used at the highest level a civilian's able to use them at, arguably, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, sense. and so, it's very easy and it's clean and like you know, it's not like, I mean, Three Gun Nation has done an excellent job of you know not using humanoid targets and things like that, and most of that is to present it to a, a greater audience, mm-hmm. right? And by having a bunch of you know, half dressed women on there that would, you know, yeah, it would grab the, a certain demographic. I don't think that's the new demographic. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The new demographic doesn't even look like the one, five years ago. They look more like me. They're, you know, white collar. Um, I don't reload. I'm not, I mean, I have a technical background in audio and stuff, but I'm not particularly mechanical. Right. Um, I love the sport. Um, I'm so grateful for the companies that help me out that make the ammo and all that stuff because then I don't have to do it, you know, <laughs> and I don't have the time where I want to. I want to be able to come out and have a, a clean, easy experience. The only commodity that matters to me and most Americans is time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you, and you're not giving me any time with the hottie, you know, and some of it's done kind of well. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I mean, I'll go there with like, I, I would say that the most, well, I, I, look, I'll just do this for the sake of the comments, but the most obvious one to talk about that would be borderline would be like Terran Tactical. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? I've seen those girls shoot, though. Are they the best in the world? No, but they shoot. I mean, you know. It's true. 
you know, it, did they speed up the video or not? You know, the arguments. <laughs> we have, I don't know. I don't really care. Um, I, you know, um, do I agree with everything he does? No. Is he a successful businessman? Yes, clearly. You know, um, so I don't. I don't know where the line is. I don't fault anybody for it. You know, I mean, just like get over yourself and like if you don't like something, this is the great thing about our country is you don't like something, don't buy it. Just don't pay attention. But to you it. know what you don't need to do? You don't need to slag it. It's true. Because there's plenty of people out there doing that. So just stop doing it. Don't don't consume the content. Don't buy the guns. You know, don't stare at the pictures in the bathroom, <laughs> whatever you're doing. <laughs> you know, if you really have an issue with it, stop consuming it. Someone's consuming it. Or it wouldn't be out there. Right. That's that simple. And that, and that's that's the uh, thing that I think people forget is like, uh, when, <laughs> so you talk crossover things. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> with uh, a picture of a gun and a car. Yeah. You have the gun crowd and the car crowd. Yeah. One of them is going to notice the other and it's going to like the other. Yeah. The thing that's universally appealing to many, many, many people out there yep. is an attractive woman. Yeah. Oh, women want to be them. Men want to do them. It's a real easy. I mean, yeah. it's a simple. It's like. I mean, but, you know, look at look at the – it's no different than the way news is presented now. They look for yeah, the Fox salacious – the, Yeah, they look for the salacious headline. They look oh, for, oh, I thought yeah, you meant – No, uh, I just mean anything. You know, it's like any of the news. It's because we're, we're consuming content in these little tiny fragments right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about long and short form, form content for just a second, but – the, the headline is the only thing that matters as it relates, and, and that might be visual too, but that's the only thing that matters is getting, you're flipping through the feed, just flipping, and then like you got to stop them somehow, right? Right, right. And there's a whole bunch of tactics for doing that, and, and attractive women is, is a tactic. It's a good one. Um, you know, it's, it's going to do far better than attractive men, right? Mm -hmm. And it's easy um, for the most part. I mean, finding somebody to pay to be in a picture isn't real hard. Give them free guns and... I mean, you know, you can supply them with a year's worth of ammo or steel or guns or whatever, and they just have to send you back pictures of them, you know, sw near sweating it. in the desert or whatever <laughs> with it, you know, and, and you've got great content for a couple of grand, you know. I mean, you can't even have a day-long photo shoot at that level anymore for $7,000, right. you know. So, I mean, my God, it's it's good arbitrage, yeah, right? It, it's good money well, yeah, in, money Yeah, you talk out. about arbitrage. It's, it, it's amazing the the low price that you could it's get something like that for. You know, some a year of someone's time for two thousand dollars worth of steel targets. It's incredible. It is incredible, and it's super easy. And and today you just go on, you just get on here, and you you get on your phone, and you go to Instagram, you hit the search button, you hashtag, you know, gun bunny or whatever, and you start following down that tunnel until you find the hashtag that has the right women in it, and then you just start DMing them. Hey guys, this is you know Mark from johnny Steele, you know I'd, I'd really like to have you you know show off our product if i give you uh you know what would it cost me in steel and they'll be like well i want five grand well you're too expensive next you know <laughs> yeah i'll go to the b plus oh okay, the b plus only wants two you know ac steel targets done and boom there's like a never-ending <laughs> stream too on instagram same with shooters i mean yeah if i wanted to have 100 shooters on my docket i could spend an afternoon on this you know, like ammo is the golden, you know, the golden fleece, the holy grail, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, if I wanted to endorse a bunch of shooters, I just flip through here and find people who are hashtagging three gun and be like, this guy's got 5,000 followers. Would you like a year's worth of ammo? Click, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, there is no excuse anymore for getting what you want at the price you want to pay for it. Right. Someone's willing to do it. Right. So, and women and, and that whole marketplace, and if they're comfortable with doing it and the company's comfortable and they think it's a good long-term plan – I say go for it. And if it doesn't work out, maybe you should change quick. And if you don't like it as a consumer, don't consume it. Yeah, yeah. But bitching about it, that's not doing anybody any good. Now you sound like a liberal. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. All right, Mark. We're, uh, this has been an exciting conversation. It's we've, been awesome. We've gone yeah. quite long here. I've got a couple uh, last questions for you. Okay. What do you see three gunners doing right that they need to do more of. Yeah, so this is interesting. I uh, it's a really good question. I would say that as we've had this influx of new shooters, we need to do everything we can to maintain that uh, squad competitor uh, personality we've had forever. You know, mm -hmm. like like just don't let that die. Right. Under any circumstance. So, so you're. You're saying like uh, maybe the culture is being diluted by new people? 
what? And we need to be. And it's not that they're doing anything. Of that old culture. Yeah, and the, it's not that they're doing anything. It's not even you don't want to hang on to the past so much. You just improve on it. But I mean, the the fact is, you got a lot of new people coming in that don't even know what being a good squad mate means. Right. So don't forget to mentor. You know, don't forget that like. I mean, now that we have classes and guys can show up somewhat prepared, doesn't mean they're three gunners yet. Yes. Right? Because we, a lot of us have been around for a little while, and I'm not even close to, you know, an old timer in this, but, um, you know, cherish that culture. And mm -hmm. um, if we don't take a few minutes just because they're able to now manipulate a gun without our help to teach them how to be a good squad mate and a good guy on the field, yeah, then we're doing a disservice to the company. So I urge to the whole, um, you know, game as a whole. So that's one I would just like, uh, you know, I don't know if they need to do more of it or less of it or what but it's like just you know be vigilant about yeah. that because it's going to get easy as we have no squads you know or you know that kind of stuff for people to sort of lose track of some of that sure because um, that that time in the dirt is still the most important thing about three gun right now absolutely what do you see three gunners doing right now that they need to stop yeah uh they need to stop complaining about what they're getting right this is an expensive sport Take that responsibility. If you want to be sponsored, or you you know you think that the prize tables need to be better and all that kind of stuff, um, you are going to have to start doing some work. If you you know, and um, and if we do the work collectively, maybe we get back to where we were a few years ago when like Guy Forty was getting you know three hundred dollar knives and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, those days are kind of over right now to some extent. And so um, stop stop bitching and moaning about prize tables. Go to the match for the game. Uh, shoot the best you can, be the best squad mate you possibly can, and contribute, um, you know, to the sport and the culture the best way you possibly can. And if you get to take home some prizes, that's a bonus. Yes. Right. Don't yeah. forget to thank those people. You know, after the try gun, I tried something this time that was a little different. Instead of doing a big, you know, or a bunch of thank yous openly, mm -hmm. I went and I DM'd on Instagram every single. Um, company and just thank them personally one-to-one -one in a one-minute video and it was the most rewarding morning i've had in a long time just people were just being really happy to get a personal because that's the new you know that's the new uh um, handwritten, that's note. The new handwritten <laughs> note right you know is taking that time right so just you know be thankful be gracious for what you get not expectant of it you know right yeah uh where do you see the sport of three gun headed oh man so, um, I see no decline in new shooters, which is at least in the short term, which is mm -hmm. super cool. Um, I think that, um, we are starting to wake up to technology and, you know, some of the, the basic services, um, you know, around paying for matches and just simple stuff, you know. Um, no checks. You know, no checks and, 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 you know, options for payment and things like that. I mean, and that, that's a really uh, micro thing, but, but we're seeing that across the board, you know, mm -hmm. in all different ways. Practice score has been a huge, huge component huge. in the evolution of us as a, as a, you know, it's like we went from the industrial age to the technology age when practice score got their legs. And, and they've got their issues, but God, any, I mean, any paid company has their issues, let alone one that's effectively free, you yes. know? Yeah. So, um, God bless them for what they've done. Um, you know, I think that the, uh, the integration between social and scoring and all that stuff is going to get more and more, um, tight, you know, uh, more seamless. I'm hoping to see that greatly. And, uh, I think we're going to see a dip in the company's involvement and we are going to have to survive that period with grace. I like it. Mark, man, this, this has been such a great time. Um, very insightful. And uh, I think there's there's a lot of nuggets in here for the uh, the sponsored shooters, the match directors, for even um, folks that work in companies and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, as well as gun bunnies. Yep. Um, <laughs> as well as gun bunnies. <laughs> or wannabes. I, I, will, I just want to throw this out there. We actually are um, – uh, piloting a project at Hawkeye Syndicate. And if you're interested in this, just DM us at Hawkeye Syndicate on Instagram that we will s do an hour or two of training with anybody around social media, answer any questions they have free charge um, to help them get better at this. I don't care if you work with my clients or don't work with my clients. I'd like to see the, the, the whole 
get better. So, because um, I believe that it doesn't matter who's, I don't believe in a zero sum game. So yeah. I don't care who's I successful. I believe in growing the pie. I believe in growing the pie. So if you want some help with that or some questions about how to get sponsored, you know, I'm not going to help you get a sponsor. Okay. But I'd be glad to teach you how to use the tools that you already have to be a better shooter and a better product user, reviewer, whatever you want to do, um, and, and put yourself out there so that you can attract the attention you need to become a sponsored shooter. And if you're a sponsored shooter who's concerned after they do the math, call me. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit, and let me help you right-size that equation for your sponsor. Cool. Mark, I was going to ask you for a final thought. I think that's a perfect place to go out, but let me just add that uh, I took advantage of that when you offered it on Facebook, yeah. and it was very valuable to me. Cool. We had like a, um, a two-hour conversation. I think we set aside 60 minutes, yep. and and it was uh, very valuable. So thank oh, you good. for that. Thank you and for that. thanks yeah. for offering that to the audience. It, usually it's just a little tweak, guys. It doesn't take much to change the boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you're th- if you're considering doing it but you don't know if it's right for you, I'd call Mark and uh and and check it out. So Sounds that's good. A good. Thank one. you for that. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate your time and uh thanks for coming on the awesome. show. And good luck with the show, man. You're doing amazing things for the community. Thank you. We appreciate it greatly. Thanks, man. Hey, before you take off, check out the show notes at 3gunshow.com slash episode 144 for links to things that Mark and I discussed in the podcast and to sign up for Patreon or to uh, to purchase your own 3 Gun Show logo tee. And hey, big news, ladies tees are now available. So buy your lady a tee. Show her you love her. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Armalite. Armalite likes the community that we are building here at the 3 Gun Show, and we have partnered up for 2017 To be sure that it is a win for you as well, Armalite has allowed me to get special pricing for listeners on their line of three-gun rifles, both the 13.5 and the 18-inch, as well as their competition handguards, gas blocks, and tunable muzzle brakes. I've been shooting the 13.5-inch rifle myself, and I'm totally digging it, Uh, but if that's not your thing, there's always that 18-inch rifle length gas gun as well. If you're in the market for a rifle or components to build your own, email me, dave at 3gunshow.com, and I'll hook you up. I'm back on the road now and traveling the country and bringing the good times back to you in podcast form. I will have all of this Armalite gear with me at matches for you to check out. So when you see me at a match, just ask and I'll be happy to show you. You can even shoot mine if you like. A quick reminder that if you enjoy this episode of the podcast, subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you will always get the very latest. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman. And I'll see you on the range. If you are finished, unload show clear.